Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. Today I have with me Mr. Vitaly Kamluk, Chief Security Expert at Kaspersky Lab, based in Belarus. And we're going to talk today about ransomware. Uh, Vitaly, if you can start quickly by just explaining what exactly is ransomware? For the end user out there who has never heard this term before, can you just briefly explain what ransomware is? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, ransomware is a type of malware that uh, locks computer system or holds the user's data by encoding it and asking for a ransom for money, money to pay in order to recover the state of the system or the decrypt the data back. Right, so in the theory is your computer gets infected with this piece of malware. The malware encrypts uh, data or parts of, parts of your machine and demands a ransom for either retrieving the data or for some reopening access to the laptop. That's Is that right. the theory? That's right. That's uh, one type of the ransomware. Another type uh, locks the whole system. It doesn't modify your data, but instead it uh, modifies system policies, uh, system user interface. It adds some features that actually make it harder to work with the system or make it totally impossible to work. What? Um how widespread is the threat? Is it localized to a certain part of the world? Are we seeing it distributed around the world? I mean, in, 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 in the grand scale, how big a threat it is? Well, it started from uh, Russian Federation. It was very common uh, here, starting from uh, 2004, when we received the first uh, serious samples of ransomware. Uh, but in 2008, it crossed the borders and entered uh, Western Europe, first of all, and then also uh, appeared in America and uh, other countries. Other what countries. are some of the countries in Western Europe you've actually seen? Uh, uh, we in have the seen wild victims. Examples? Now we see victims from all over the world, actually. So from Germany, from England, uh, from even you know s smaller countries uh, like you know Czech Republic and mm. others. Uh, has there been ransomware examples on mobile devices as well, or is this uh, limited to Windows desktops? Uh, in 2008, we have seen something similar to ransomware, which turned out to be fake, but it behaved very, very uh, similar to the uh, computer ransomware. Um, it actually displayed a, a message to the user uh, saying that if you are not going to pay uh, it was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, 20 yuan, mm -hmm. uh, that's a Chinese currency. Um, if you are not going to pay, all your files will be encoded um, and the system will not work. But it was a fake message and the mm -hmm. malware didn't work properly. Uh, has it been uh, easy or has it been very difficult to crack these encryption uh, schemes being used? Talk a little bit about the en encryption being used, uh, some of the advances in the encryption we've seen from the earliest variants up to where we are now and talk a little bit about some of the uh, defense mechanisms that have gone into it from your own research, how easy or how difficult it has been to crack this. Um, yeah, that's a good point because actually encrypting ransomware is the most dangerous because uh, modifying system policies is revertible. But um, when the files are encoded and sometimes a strong cryptographic algorithm is used and it's very hard to get the original state of the files to decode them. And there were several types of um, encrypting ransomware. Um, some of the ransomware utilizes so-called uh, symmetric uh, crypto algorithms, which means that um, the same key or the same password that uh, the malware uses for uh, encrypting the files can be used for decrypting the files. Right. So our task is uh, to analyze the malware and to find where the um, encryption key is hidden in the body of the malware. Once we found the key, we, we can analyze the algorithm that was used to encrypt the files and make a tool. Normally, it is a free tool or a part of our antivirus basis of our right. main product uh, to help our users to decode the files. But the second type is more difficult, which appeared in the um, first time in 2006. It was the first serious encryption, which utilized a so-called asymmetric uh, encryption algorithm, right. which means that the malware could encrypt the data with um, some key uh, hard-coded in the body. But it, um, even if you have this key, you are not able to decrypt the files because you need a special key, the second part of the right. key called secret key, which uh, only the malware author uh, has and uh, only he can use this key to decrypt the files. So that made a big problem because um, our analysis of the malware couldn't help in with decrypting the, the files. Right. 
and uh, there was a challenge of you know finding uh, some mistakes in implementation of the algorithms yeah. or weaknesses in the key generation and we managed to uh, win this battle several times starting from 2006 uh, the then implementation battle, just getting around weaknesses in the implementation, exactly. or, or actually cracking. Well, the well, first variants uh, used pretty small and tiny uh, key lengths so that we could crack it by brute forcing, right. and then we found the weaknesses in um, implementation of key generation algorithms so that we could crack the keys again. And uh, the, the largest, the longest um, key we cracked was 660 bits for right. RSA algorithm, uh, but. Um, in 2007, um, we've seen advances. We've seen that. advances, yes, and then the longest uh, key length so far was 1,024 bits, which wasn't cracked and uh, still still hasn't been cracked. What do you uh, expect we'll be seeing down the road in a few months from now or a few years from now? What kind? How do you predict we'll see ransomware advancing? Um, well, there are there is pretty scary forecasts, I would say, because. Um, we see that ransomware actually brings money to the bad guys just because um, a lot of users tend to contact the bad guy and to follow the instructions to pay the money and to to try to right. get their data back. And the back. fact that we're seeing new versions just shows that it's actually working. Exactly. It's actually an investment. Exactly. It's worth an investment. Exactly. And the problem in, in, in this behavior is that uh, this actually stimulates the users uh, stimulates um, not only the users but also the, the ransomers, to the malware authors, to create more sophisticated and more widespread uh, malware to catch more users with right. this. So you expect we'll see a lot more of that, a lot more advanced. Right. We we already versions. see increase uh, exponential increase of uh, of the malware samples mm -hmm. we receive and. Um, Currently, um, monthly, we, we get uh, about 10,000 of uh, samples of ransomware. So just let's end quickly with uh, some advice for end users. How do I, as an end user, spot uh, ransomware infection in progress when, when it happens? What am I seeing? What am I likely to see on the screen? And if I see that on my screen, what are some of the advice and tips you give the end users to help minimize the damage? Well, the most common signs of infection of ransomware are the messages that appear on your screen as a change of your wallpaper or a pop-up um, uh, windows on your screen or just, you know, text files appearing here and there. Uh, right. on so your you see hardware. something that says your, 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 uh, your data has been encrypted. So any sort of text and any sort of warning message like that is the first sign. Right, right, exactly. This is the first um, sign of uh, infection of ransomware. Mm -hmm. Uh, before that sign, you probably will not notice that you are being attacked, even if uh, the malware works and encrypting your files actively. Mm. Um, well, ransomware actually differs in behavior. Some um, ransomware um, families, malicious families, are uh, showing the uh, pop-ups uh, before encrypting all your files or locking your system. Some right. of them are doing that right after that process. So there is a chance you can... <coughs> Uh, stop the encryption from happening once you see this message early enough. Exactly. What should I do? Exactly. And uh, um, a method to detect that is uh, once you see the pop-up um, indicating that you have been infected with a ransomware, saying that something like all your files have been encrypted and you cannot get your data back unless you pay money or something like that. Um, once you see that, um, please check the um, indicator of your hard drive on your computer and check whether it works actively or not. <clears throat> if the mm -hmm. lamp is blinking, that means that uh, there is a, some process uh, is going on with your hard drive. Right. And we have seen um, a sample, one of the most uh, probably dangerous now, which wasn't cracked yet, um, a GP code sample. Um, it, it actually popped up the message and started encrypting your files in the background. And that's why the lamp of your hard drive started blinking. blinking right. And uh, if you see that it's blinking and you see the pop-up message, if you press reset button, the, hard, uh, the, the malware will be just, you know, it will disappear from the memory. It uh, will not start after reboot. And uh, probably the biggest, the majority mm -hmm. of your files will not be encrypted. So one of the first things you should do is fastly, uh, very quickly, uh, press the reset button or maybe even unplug the machine. That's uh, right, machine from but please be attentive with the HDD lamp. If right. it blinks, 
then reset. If it doesn't, that means all your files have been encrypted already and probably it is um, wiser not to reset such machine but keep it running just as is because there might be uh, some information left in your memory that could help uh, you know, specialists and experts to, to find yeah. uh, the, the, the encryption key and probably help you with uh, recovering your files and state of the system. So uh, in the case uh, of not blinking HDD lamp once you see the message, don't reset your system and don't touch it, don't right. disconnect it from power. Thank you very much, Vitaly. Thank very you. good information. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab.